I'm Hannah Casal. I'm a nursing student at Auburn University in the Nurse Practitioner Program. And this is Haley. This is my patient today for my head to toe physical assessment. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Haley, can you give me your full name and date of birth? Haley Sumner, um, November 13th, 1992. And where are you at right now? In the hospital. Okay. Um, what year are we in? 2020. Do you know who the president is? Donald Trump. Perfect. So when Haley walked into the office, I saw that she had a steady gait. She was moving all of her extremities. Um, she does appear to be healthy and in good spirits. She has a pleasant uh, demeanor. She's in no obvious distress. Her speech is coherent and clear. She was able to answer my questions appropriately, and she is alert. So she's alert and oriented times four. Um, her skin color, generally looking at her, is pink. Uh, she has no flushing. She's very tall and slender. She appears to be fit and healthy. Um, on, at a glance, she appears to be non-obese. She is a young adult female with no abnormal sexual development. Um, her posture is upright. She slouches just slightly. And um, as far as her dress goes, she is well-groomed. She's dressed appropriately for today's exam. And um, her hygiene is, is good. She has no odors that I can smell. Um, her vitals during triage, they were all within normal limits. Her blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, oxygen, and respirations were normal. Again, she is a 25-year-old female. She's roughly 5'9", 125 pounds. Um, are you in any pain today? No. No, so she does deny pain as her uh, last vital sign. Uh, skin and nails is where we're going to start. So I will be assessing the skin throughout the exam, and I'll um, verbalize that. But just a general glance, there is no um, obvious signs of rashes or bruises or lesions. Her skin does appear to be warm and dry. I'm going to check her nails for any clubbing. I do not notice any clubbing. Her cap refill is less than three seconds. There's no signs of uh, cyanosis. And I'm going to check her skin turgor for hydration status, and there is no uh, tinting there. So we'll head, um, we'll head to the head. We'll start with your head here. I'm just going to generally inspect the, um, the head, starting with the hair. Her hair is very thick and coarse. It appears to be evenly distributed with no obvious thinning, and I don't see any presence of lice. Um, I'm going to look at the scalp. I will be assessing for any flaking or lesions. I don't see any uh, lesions, no lumps, no flakes. I'm going to palpate the skull, and there are no depressions. It appears to be normocephalic and symmetrical. So we will move on to the face. Haley, could you smile real big for me and frown? All right, puff your cheeks out. Close your eyes. Clench them real tight. Open them real wide. Good. Close your eyes again and try to open them. Perfect. What we're doing here is testing cranial nerve 7, which appears to be intact. So now we'll check cranial nerve 5. Clench your jaw for me. Good. Nice jaw strength there. So it, uh, cranial nerve 5 appears to be intact as well. So now I'm going to assess her sinuses. I will uh, palpate and percuss and then transilluminate the frontal as well as the maxillary uh, sinuses. So first, Haley, I'm just going to touch. Is there any tenderness in here? No. I'll palpate. Any tenderness? Her sinuses appear to be non-tender, and I do not notice any swelling or redness. So what we're going to do now is check your temporomandibular joint. Can you open up real wide for me? Is there any pain in there? All right, I do not note any tenderness, swelling, or redness. So now I'm going to check your lymph nodes. Um, there will be eight that I'm checking, and we're going to do the uh, pre-auricular the post auricular, the occipital, the tonsillar, tell me if anything's tender, the submandibular, the submental, the cervical chain, and the supraclavicular. Any swelling? I'm sorry, any pain? No. I don't notice any swelling, redness, um, and they're all non tender and mobile. Um, for her eyes, we're going to first check the external structure of the eye. I do not see any obvious drooping of the eyelid, her sclera appears to be white, her cornea is intact, and there's no redness or swelling in the conjunctiva. So I'm going to palpate the lacrimal glands. Is there any pain there? No. There is no drainage noted there as well. So we're going to move on to cranial nerve 2. We're going to check uh, for visual acuity using this Snellen hand chart. So Haley would hold it at an arm's length. We would check her visual acuity in both eyes, and we are going to pretend like we did that, and it is 20-20 bilaterally. Um, next, we would do the confrontation test. So I want you to 
um, just sit on the edge of the bed for me. And I want you to cover your right eye. I'm going to cover my left eye. And what I want you to do is tell me when you can see my finger wiggle in each visual field. Okay, good. So Haley does have uh, all of her visual fields appear to be intact. There are no deficits. So now I'm going to use my ophthalmoscope to assess the anatomy of the eye. Um, I'm going to look at the lens and retina by shining the light from the side, and I'm looking to make sure there are no opacities and I do not see any bilaterally. So now what I'll do is I will um, visualize the anatomy of the eye. Haley, look at me. I'm going to um, assess her right eye with my right eye. I'm going to first look for the red reflex, moving in closely to visualize the optic disc, the retinal background, the macula, and the fovea centralis. All right, I'm going to look for the red reflex. When I see that, I'm going to move in. And the optic disc appears to be round, yellowish, orange, and defined. I do not see any signs of hemorrhage in the retinal background, no abnormalities with the um, Macula and the uh, fovea centralis appears normal as well. So now we will test uh, cranial nerve three, four, and six. Haley, I'd like you to uh, focus on my finger and follow my finger in all directions. I'm going to do the shape of an H. And Haley is following it in all directions. I do not notice any nystagmus, any lid lag, and she has conjugate movement in all directions. So now I'll check pupillary response with my pen light. I'm going to shine my light in one eye and the other. And her pupils do appear to be equally round and reactive to light. I'll focus on the wall for me there, and now focus on the pen. And her eyes do accommodate two close objects. So I'm going to do the corneal light reflect te reflection test. Uh, this is where I shine a light in her eye, and I would expect the uh, reflection of the light to be just nasal to her pupil. Straight ahead, and it is. So we will move on to the cover uncover test. So Haley, I'm going to cover one eye. I want you to just leave that there for just a second, and when I uncover it, there is no lateral movement of the covered eye. So that test is normal, and I would do that bilaterally. Now we're going to inspect inspect the ears. I'm going to palpate the external uh, structures, the articles, any pain there. Um, I do this bilaterally, but I do not see any deformities here, no lesions, and she denies pain. So, Haley, I'm going to whisper um, some letters and numbers, and I want you to tell me what you hear. A, B, C, one, two, three. All right, she replies appropriately, so there are no hearing deficits on the whisper test. So now I'm going to use my otoscope. I'm going to inspect her inner ear and visualize the tympanic membrane at the same time. We'll pull up and back. And I do see um, honey-colored cerumen there. <laughs> and there are no foreign bodies, and I see no redness and swelling. Um, her tympanic membrane appears to be pearly gray. It is shiny, and the cone of light was visualized at roughly 5 o'clock. So now I'm going to test with my tuning fork cranial nerve 8, which tests for lateralization and conduction. So, Haley, I'm going to ask you if you hear or feel the vibration on e equally on both sides or more on one or the other. Okay, so we do feel it equal on both sides. Equal? Good. All right, now I'd like you to tell me when you no longer hear the vibration in your ear. That was the Weber, and this is the Ryan test. Do you hear it now? Good. So she does hear air condu conduction longer than she hears bone, so the Ryan test is normal. So now we will move on to the nose. I'm going to assess her external structure. It appears that the nose, the anatomy of the nose is symmetrical. I don't see any deformities. I don't notice any lesions. So now I'm going to palpate it. Is there any pain or tenderness there? Can you breathe in for me? Uh, the lateral nares appear to be patent. There's no occlusions. It's soft and it's non-tender. Haley, now I'm going to look on the um, internal part of your nose. I'm just going to do one side for the sake of time. Um, let me just look in here. Her septum appears to be uh, midline. Her mucosa is red. I do see some clear drainage in there. Her turbinates appear to be normal, no swelling, and I do not see any polyps there. Um, Haley, I'd like you to close your eyes. I'm going to um, put a pretty common smell in front of your nose. I want you to tell me what you smell. No. 
um, also. Good. So she uh, identifies smell appropriately, so cranial nerve one that checks smell is also intact. So now we're moving on to her throat and her mouth. Um, first, I will assess the lips. They appear to be just a little bit dry, but I don't see any cracking. They seem to be relatively moist, no edema. I'm going to check the mucosa of the mouth. Open your mouth for me. All right, say ah. Uh, Stick your tongue out, say ah. Uh, okay, good. And smile real big. Checking for um, the, the mucosa, mucosa rather is pink, moist. I don't see any ulcers in her mouth. There were no missing teeth. Her dental care, uh, she does not have dental caries. And I didn't see any gingival swelling or um, abnormalities. When she said ah, her palate rose. I didn't see a cleft palate. Um, so the palate appears to be intact. Her tongue was pink and moist. I didn't see any lesions of the tongue. And um, let me check under your tongue. Lift your tongue for me. All right, good. I do visualize the Stinsons and sublingual ducts without um, abnormality. So now we're going to check. Let's see. Let's do cranial nerve 12. Stick your tongue out for me. Move left, right, up, down. Good. So there's no deviation when she moves her tongue to the left or right. Um, so that's cranial nerve 12. And then again, cranial nerve 9, the uvula. Stick your tongue out. Say ah. Uh -huh. The uvula rises when she says ah. And it is midline. So cranial nerve 10, we're going to check her gag reflex. Um, can you swallow for me? Good. And in a normal exam, we may stimulate the gag reflex, but for purposes of this exam, cranial nerve 10 appears to be intact. Um, we're going to check the pharynx, which I did. I did not see any ex exudate, no redness, and no swelling. And once again, the tonsils appear to be present and non-swollen. I do not see any tonsillar abscesses. So let's move on to the neck. I don't see any obvious signs of scarring, no lesions. They appear to be, the, the neck is symmetrical. I'm going to fill one at a time her carotid pulse. And it is strong and present bilaterally, um, equal. So let's have you move your neck. Can you turn left, right, and then go up, and chin to chest? Good. Um, I'm going to go ahead while we're at it and check cranial nerve 11. Can you shrug your shoulders against my, good, push against my hand? And do the same. Good. She has full range of motion in all directions of her neck, and she shrugs against uh, resistance, so her cranial nerve 11 is intact. Um, turn and put your feet on that side of the bed. I'm going to check for your thyroid. So what I'm feeling for is a rise when she swallows. Swallow for me. Good. And I do feel the thyroid rise when she swallows. There is no border. Um, her trachea appears to be midline. There's no deviation. Any tenderness there? Okay, good. So you can go ahead and sit down. Back on the bed, we're going to check um, the thorax and the respiratory system now. So I would just generally look and see that her respirations, um, there she has a regular rate, rhythm, and normal respirations. There's no obvious signs of distress. She's not using accessory muscles to breathe. There's no supraclavicular retractions going on. So we would start this exam by palpating, inspecting, and doing our exam on the back side first. So once again, I'm sorry, I'm going to inspect the posterior first. So um, I don't see any deformities. Everything appears to be symmetrical. Um, I'm going to check lung expansion by placing my hands on your back. Take a deep breath and let it out. Good. And the lung expansion is symmetrical bilaterally. So now I'm going to palpate. You tell me if you feel any tenderness in any of these places. I'm also feeling for crepitus. I feel no abnormalities, no crepitus. Do you have any pain? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to check her thoracic spine while we're at it. And there is no malalignment. Any pain? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Pain in the ribs? No. The ribs appear to be abnormal. I don't see any abnormalities. I'm going to check for uh, CVA tenderness. Right over the cost over tubal angle. Any tenderness? Mm -hmm. No tender. So, um, when I move my hands, I want you to say 99. Yeah. 99. 99. 99. So what we're checking for there is fremitus. There is no decreased fremitus upon um, her verbalizing 99 in all three areas. So now I'm going to percuss in a ladder pattern starting up here. I would expect there to be resonance throughout. All of the areas and it is resonant throughout 
Um, lastly, I will auscultate. Deep breath. And I would do, in a ladder pattern, I would check all uh, seven directions bilaterally, and I do hear equal vesicular sounds in all lung fields, no adventitious sounds. So sit back for me, Haley. We're going to check anteriorly the same, the same things. I'm going to inspect, take a deep breath. Everything appears to rise and fall symmetrically. There's no deformities. I'm going to check for uh, costal angle, and it is roughly 90 degrees right there. Um, Haley, any tenderness when I palpate? I do not feel any crepitus, no abnormalities, and she says that it is non-tender, so we're going to percuss throughout, starting at the supraclavicular. Tell me if there's any tenderness. All right, and it is resonant throughout. Lastly, I will auscultate again in the same areas, expecting there to be equal vesicular sounds bilaterally. And I would do the same thing, moving my stethoscope in this ladder pattern to all, all of the lung fields. Um, no adventitious sounds, and I do hear, hear equal vesicular sounds throughout. Um, next, we would do a breast exam with the bed uh, flat. Before we lay down, I'd like you to sit straight up, and I would obviously assess without a bra on for um, symmetry of the breast and dimpling. Raise your hands above your head. Good. Um, I do not see any asymmetry, and I do not see any dimpling in those two positions. So now I would palpate, and Haley, go ahead and lay back for me. Um, it's okay. We'll just do it like this. We're going to pretend like the bed is flat, so you would put your right hand behind your head, this is the same way you would do a breast exam at home. This is called your tail of spents right here. Any tenderness? Okay, so you would want to feel for tenderness here. And then um, you, with your arm behind your head, you press in kind of a zigzag pattern here. And you go in to the nipple, checking for any lumps along the way. Any tenderness there? All right, it's non-tender. I don't feel any nodules, and there's no breast discharge. So at the same time, I would check her axillary nodes. They appear to be non-swollen. Any tenderness? Okay, good. So now we're going to move on to the heart. Um, I'm going to inspect her jugular veins. I do not see any JVD bilaterally, so I'm going to palpate the chest once more Any for any heaves or thrills, which I do not find. Um, I'm going to find her point of maximal impulse, which is fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. And I do feel a very regular, strong breathing rhythm. I'm going to auscultate. I would do this with the bell and the diaphragm of my stethoscope for purposes of this exam. I'm going to just use the diaphragm. So I'm going to listen at the aortic, the pulmonic, the herbs point, the tricuspid valve, and the mitral valve. Again, with the bell and the diaphragm, I hear a regular rate and rhythm. No murmurs. S1 and S2 is heard, and I do not hear any S3 or S4 heart sounds. Her carotids, I would also listen with my stethoscope for the carotids bilaterally. There's no abnormalities, no bruises, and I do hear them equally bilateral. Again, temporal arteries, same thing. No abnormalities, no bruises, and they are equal bilaterally. So we'll move on to the abdomen. First, I will inspect the abdomen. Pull this up. I don't see any scarring or rashes, no lesions. I'm going to check the umbilicus. Uh, it's midline. There's no redness, no signs of any kind of umbilical hernia. Her contour is very flat. I'm going to listen next before I percuss or palpate for bowel sounds. I'll do that in all four quadrants here. And I do hear bowel sounds. They are present about 20 per minute. Um, next, I would percuss. I would expect to hear a tympanic sound in all four quadrants which I do, the sound is a little dull over the liver, and I would measure the liver span by palpating, uh, I'm sorry, percussing down, percussing up, and measuring the span, which is roughly six to 12 centimeters, and then I would palpate, um, percuss, I'm sorry, the spleen over the mid-clavicular left line. Um, then I would palpate light at first, any tenderness here in any of the quadrants? And then I would percuss deep. She is soft and non-tender. There's no masses, no pains. The liver, the spleen, and the kidneys that here they're non-palpable. I would also measure the aortic, I'm sorry, the 
abdominal aorta, and the abdominal reflexes. Typical, yeah. Yep, and they are definitely present. All right, we're moving on to the extremities. I would check her inguinal nodes at this time, um, which we would expect to be discrete, non-tender, and mobile. Her femoral pulse, we would expect to be plus two gray and very brisk. I won't do that for purposes of this exam. Um, I'm going to palpate and assess all of her extremities. Um, I would do that bilaterally. I do not see any edema. There's no dry skin. I'm sorry, there's, her skin appears to be warm and dry. Um, I would grade her distal pulses, so we would check the radial, the popliteal, the posterior, tip, posterior tibial, and the dorsalis pedis, and those are all plus two and normal. Um, we're going to quickly check the range of motion and strength in all of your joints. So I'm going to inspect each, and I'm going to feel of each, okay? We already did the neck. You had a full range of motion in all directions, and you had a five out of five strength. Um, so now we're going to move on to the shoulders. Again, we kind of did this one, but let's put your arms over your head, down, behind your head, behind your head, back. <laughs> arms straight out, push against mine. Good. Now push down against mine. She has five out of five strength in um, all of her shoulders, or her shoulders rather. Um, we're going to check your elbows, bend, extend, twist. All right, push against, bend, sorry, push against me. Good, five out of five strength there as well. Hands, let's uh, bend, extend, move, fingers, good. Push against me, and push up. Good, five out of five strength. We're gonna move on to the spine. I'm gonna check for any scoliosis. I would have you bend all the way over. Good, I would check for scoliosis at this point, and as curvature of the spine is noted, lean back, and lean side to side. All right, she has full range of motion in all Areas. Any tenderness down the spine this process, mm -hmm. I would just check for tenderness. Um, back in the bed, let's check your feet and ankles. I want you to move your ankles in, out, point, flex, and push against my hands. Good. Pull. Good. Now we're going to, that's a five out of five strength as well. Bend your knees for me. Both knees and straighten them. Good. Um, and let's see here. Let's check your hips. Uh, pull your leg in. I'm going to move it out. Now, straight leg raise. Push against my hand. Push. Good. And we would do the same on both, and she has a five out of five strength. Um, last, I'm going to check your deep tendon reflexes. Again, I would use the hammer for this, the reflex hammer. Um, we would check her triceps, her biceps, her brachioradialis, her patellar reflex, her ankle or Achilles reflex, and the plantar which we would expect the Babinski to be negative. So now, lastly, we're gonna move on to the nervous system. Again, Haley's conscious, she's alert, she is oriented, she has no cognitive impairment, she's been following my commands throughout the exam. What did you have for lunch, Haley? Sandwich. And what did you do for vacation last? Beach. Good, so she has recent and remote memory recall. Um, again, we've already checked her orientation, she's alert and oriented times four. I'm going to give you, close your eyes, I'm going to put something in your hand, a, a common object. I want you to tell me what that is. A spoon. Good. So she recognizes uh, that this is a spoon with her eyes closed. And um, we're going to test your sensation real quick. This is going to be sharp. This is going to be a dull object. So when you feel this, tell me if it's sharp or dull. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Good, so her sensation of bilateral upper and lower extremities is equal. And let's check your cerebellar function. Touch your nose, now touch my finger as fast as you can. And I would do this on both sides, and her cerebellar function is intact, there's no deficits. So I'm gonna have you hop up, up a couple times for me. You're gonna check your motor function, do the heel to toe test. Okay, and Haley does have a steady gait. Um, while doing the heel to toe test. Close your eyes for me. This is the Romberg test. Haley is not swaying, so she does have a negative Romberg test. So I think that wraps up our head to toe assessment, and thank you for your time.